Hello and welcome to another tutorial from OICT. In this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to make a save the peasants item drop down game. Let's just take a look at what we're making. So the game that we're making is where the presents are dropping from the top and you've got a net that you can control with the mouse move and you can go left and right to catch them. If you hit one of them then you catch them. It shows up in the court and then if you miss uh, more than six then the game ends. It tells you that you, uh, you lost. Click OK to try again. And then when we click OK the game will restart okay so we're going to be making this uh, new tutorial uh, using wpf and c sharp programming inside of visual studio so in this window uh, click on create any project uh, make sure you pick the wpf app.net framework click next so let's name this project save the presents more ict wpf okay so click create Okay. Before we begin, uh, make sure you follow the link in the description and download the images for this game. So the images, okay, so I have them all downloaded. Um, these are the images that we're going to be using. So you get your background, net left, right, and a couple of uh, present images. Okay, so first let's import the assets. So let's go and right click on the name of the project. Say add to new folder, the images. Right click on the images folder now, click on add to existing items. Let's go to downloads. Okay, make sure you have them all extracted. So I've extracted them into a new folder. So from the drop down, click on image files. So now I can select all of them. Okay, and click add. The background is a JPEG and the rest of them are PNG images. Okay, so, so in here we're gonna go and change that to a from a grid to a canvas. So let's change the title as well. So say save the presents WPF game. Get the WPF capital. Okay, so let's set the height and width in here as well. Give the height about 700 and width 525. Okay. And one of the things uh, we can also do is we can set the resize mode to can minimize only. So you can't maximize it so we can't really change the size of it we can only minimize the project so as you can see the maximize button is doled out okay so that's just another feature that we can do inside of the xaml code okay, so to start um, let's give this one a name the canvas so say my canvas set the background to orange for now set focusable to true and then uh, the event that we after is the mouse move okay so i'll say canvas underscore mouse move like that right so inside here let's do a label first so label name is going to be score text okay font size Font weight to extra black. Okay. And I can end that one here. And this can be the score. You see, it shows up right at the top, right there. Okay, so I'll duplicate that. So I'm just going to select the line, press Ctrl D, and then I can. Okay, because there's two, two of them with the same name, that's why it's giving an invalid markup. So we can call this one list text, then that should come back. You can just drag and move that to say about here. It's fine. And change that from score to missed. Okay, with those two set up, let's go set up the player. So player is going to be a rectangle. The name be player one. Uh, 80 and height 80 that's the dimension of the picture so we can just use that and so for now let's end the tag here so that's going to be the player character there so we can move the player right to the bottom here okay so you know a way to identify it would be if we give it a fill and let's say red just to see where the player is okay so 
that's pretty much it what we need to do for the canvas so now if you just right click on the mass move and click on go to definition we should be able to add that to the c sharp script okay first let's import the namespace So threading uh, allows us to use the dispatcher timer class. Let's make two functions. So maybe private void, say reset game. Okay, and we also need one make presence. So these are the two that we're gonna need to make the game work. And let's go add the variables for this game. It's max items is equal to five current items to zero. Okay, uh, let's make a random class. So rand equals new random. Score equal to zero and missed equal to zero as well. Let's say rect um, player hitbox. So that's gonna allow us to sort of check when the player collides with the presence. Okay, let's go to the dispatcher timer. Call it game timer equals new dispatcher timer like so. In the list of rectangles. Okay, so it's going to be items to remove. Outline segment list. Okay. Let's go do two image brushes. So we need play image. And we need a, another image brush for the background. Inside the main constructor, we're gonna load up all the default values. So let's start with the game canvas. So say my canvas, dot focus. And then let's go add the main timer.tick. So plus equals, let's call this one game engine. Go into the game timer interval. Four milliseconds. You need 20 milliseconds. So each um each 20 millisecond this game timer will tick. Okay, and then we can start the game timer here as well. Right after that, we can assign the player and the background image. So let's say, for example, play image, image source is equal to new bitmap image instead of here, new URI. Okay, so instead of new um, bitmap image, we're going to give a location using the new URI class. Uh, so the URI class to navigate towards the images folder yeah so we can't really say images slash you know background or JPEG uh, we kind of have to go through the pack and then the application as well okay, so let's go and show you how to do that so I'll say pack like so double slash application colon we'll do like three commas here then now we can say images slash background that's the player. So let's say net left dot png. Okay, so that would go inside the application, find the images folder, and then assign that net dot png to this source here. Then we can say player dot fill player one dot fill equals the image. Okay. So I'm just going to copy and paste that here for the background. Right. Let's go and say background image and change the because background is a JPEG image. So background.jpg. Okay, and instead of here, we're going to say my canvas.background. So my canvas.background equals background image. And now if you hover over the game engine line there, the one with the red line under it, so just go to show potential fixes, and then just click on the first option and it will add the event for us. Okay, we don't need that line. 
Okay, so at the moment if I just click on play the game, so click on start, as you can see it's assigned the background. So in the image there's a little divider here to read the text better. And then he also assigned the player image for us as well. So I think first um, we'll do the mouse move so we can actually move the player left and right using the mouse location. So let's go here and say point, say position, e dot get position. So we can reference this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, this value to actually identify an x value for the player. So we can say double px like so equals position dot x. So we just want the horizontal value. And then we can say canvas dot set left. So let's go find player one. All right, so player one's left is going to be px. So minus ten. So we'll give it about a speed of ten and see how that works for us. Uh, now to switch the images. Okay, so now if we go and try that for a second. So see at the moment I can actually move the net with the mouse and it's pretty smooth. I don't think I need to change that speed. So we can move it to the one. And one nice thing is if you notice that we can actually see the background through the net as well. Okay. That's a nice transparency. So now we want to move the net left and right depending on where it is on the canvas. So say canvas don't get left. Say player, if it's um, less than two hundred and sixty pixels, right, then player image source is going to be the left. So let's not copy that. Let's say player one. So else. Okay, it's going to be the net dot net right image. Okay, so if we try that now, so, so as soon as I go right, the net changes to the right side, and then when I'm gone below 260 pixels, it changes to the left. Okay. So now let's do the make presence function. So instead of here, we're going to create a local image brush. All presence equals new image brush here. So this image brush is going to be used to swap the images of the different rectangles created through here, and then it's going to assign different images based on their random number that we generate. So say int i equals run dot next. Okay, so we're just going to generate a random number between one and six. Okay, so let's do a switch statement here. So we're going to see. But if the number that's generated here, if it's a one, if it's a two, if it's a three or four, five or six, depending on the number that's generated here, we can assign a different value and assign sorry, assign a different image to this presence image brush. Okay, so let's go to case one first. Let's say presence, I'm just gonna paste that again here. Change that to presence. Okay, and this one can be presence underscore zero one. So I think that's what it's called. So presence underscore zero one. That's the first one there, and that's a transparent image as well. Okay, so presence underscore zero one PNG, and then we can break. Okay, so if I copy this part here. So I've got six now. I just need to change them to two, three, four. Change that to five. And finally, change that to six. Okay, so that's the switch statement that we need outside the switch statement. We need to make a new rectangle. So say rectangle here. Say new rec 
columns in the rectangle like so. And then I'm going to be adding some properties inside of the rectangle as this gets created. Okay. So we can give it a tag goes to drops because these are the items that's gonna drop. Width set to 50, comma, height is another 50, comma, and then fill is going to be the presence image brush that we created. Okay, so whatever number that's generated randomly here, it'll go through the switch statement and then it'll assign it to the presence here. So the semicolon there for number. Okay, so if we just save some space here. Then we can go into the next bit. So now we need to set the canvas top and left of this new rectangle. So say canvas. So set left. So new rec. Right. So we're gonna say random dot next. Next double. Random dot next. Um, somewhere between let's say ten and four hundred and fifty. This is a canvas does at top. So here we say new work again and then dot next. Um, next maybe to like 60 to say 150. So we don't want them to spawn right inside the canvas. We want them to spawn outside the canvas. So we can say we can multiply that by minus one. So whatever um, number generated from here will be converted to a negative number. So that way it will generate to say minus um, 70 or minus 100 and minus 120, right? So it'll be on top of the scene and then it'll come back down using the timer. Okay, now we can say my canvas dot children dot add. Then finally we add the new rec to the scene, okay? So that we can, now we can start on the game engine. So first, let's do the score text. The content equals. So it just shows how much we, um, how many we actually caught. I think instead of score, let's say caught instead. Let's say list text dot content equal to list the space in the end. And then say missed right here. Okay, so we don't want to spawn um, lots of items together. We want to spawn maximum about five items. That's why we have got the max items integer there. Okay, so what we're going to say here is if say current items is less than max items, right? Then uh, we're going to run the make presence function, right? And then we'll add one to the current items. Also, what we're going to do is items to remove. And we'll just clear what's inside of it. Whenever he creates a new item, we're going to clear it off. But as soon as he leaves it or he hits the player, it's going to get removed by getting added to this one anyway. Okay, so now we can start on the main loop. So let's do a for each loop here. So variable x in my canvas dot children dot off type we are interested in rectangles and we should do the brackets in the end okay so if the rectangles have a string tag right so we're interested in is so if x dot tag is equals equals drops okay we can say canvas dot set top to x and say canvas dot get top x and then we can say plus um, say 10 for now we can change that up later on if you want to so let's see if that actually works so right now we have a problem Oh yeah, the presence is all bt present. That's my mistake. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, so right now 
you've got five presents that are coming down so at the moment they go off screen but they don't come back up again so we, can, oh, we don't have any another way to sort of check so right now because the current items has gone exactly equals to max item so it's created five items for us and then that's it so what we need to do here is uh, we need to sort of remove them first right and then it should come back up okay so in here if we can say if canvas that get top right of x is say if it's greater than 720 okay then we can say items to remove to add so we're going to add the x to the items to be removed list first so after this line we can remove one from the current items by saying current items minus minus so whichever item gets removed we'll just remove one from the current items there okay and then we'll add one to the list there okay so at the moment we're just adding to the items to be removed but we're not removing from the canvas yet so that's what we need to do here so we need to run another for each loop say variable i right in items to be removed so whatever is inside of the items to be removed there so in here we can say in my canvas dot children dot remove and then just remove i yep. okay, so this way they will all be removed so to see it happen let's change that to say about 400 so you can see it um, disappear from the game okay so at the moment it comes to about 400 and then it disappears and then a five more gets created okay and then once they disappear five more gets created after that that's good okay, so we can change that back to say 720 so while we're still inside this if statement create a, a box for the presence so create a rect called presence hitbox new rect here so it's going to go right here we can say canvas dot get left it's going to be the x say canvas dot get top x as well then x dot width and x dot height okay so that would be the hitbox for the presence and now we need to define the hitbox for the player that we created over here so player hitbox so let's just say here and player hitbox there equals new rect and then inside of here we can actually we can just copy and paste that so inside there say player one okay instead of x one of those can be player one so now we can check for a collision between the player and the presence hitbox. Okay, so say for example, player hitbox here dot intersect with presence hitbox. So what we can do here is we can just probably copy and paste that in again. So and instead of missed, this time it's just going to say score plus plus. So we're going to add one to the score instead of missed. Okay, but it's still going to remove it it's going to add it to this one reduce one from the current items because that's the item that we don't need okay so we can do that now let's go try it out so if i catch one see it actually it says it caught one hit them caught them as well so it seems like both numbers are updating and it's working so last thing we need to do is we need to give it a if we have missed six objects okay so under here we can say if missed is let's say greater than six okay so in here we can just top the timer message box dot show so we're going to show a message to the player and then say um, you oh, closed you lost okay and then do it plus environment a new line so let's say for example you scored 
wherever the score was. And a new line class. And click OK to play again. Oh, I duplicated it. So once we uh, once the game timer stops, it's going to show a message box right here, and then it's just going to say uh, you lost, and then you scored. It says scored, and then it's going to after that it's going to say click OK to play again. And we can also give it a title to this message box to say um, and I'll set the presence game. NCT. Okay, and once you click OK, you want to. So we want to run the restart game. Okay, so show that bit there. So that's just a string. All right, so I'm just going to miss a bunch of them. Okay, so. Right there, as you can see, it says you lost, you scored one, click OK to play again, and then it shows the title or the message box as well. Okay, so when I click OK, it doesn't, as I said, the one would do anything because we haven't put that um, instruction inside the restart function just yet. Okay, so what we're going to do in the restart function is um, instead of dropping down everything and uh, resetting everything back, what we're just going to do is we're going to close the current form and then restart, open new form with the values uh, loaded up again. Okay. So if I go here and say system dot diagnostics dot process dot start. Okay, instead of here, I can name the application resource assembly then location. So I'm just saying what do you want it to start? And then application dot current dot shutdown. So shut down the current one. And then environment exit zero. I'll try that now. There's five here. So I got that. So now if I click OK, it just shuts down the current one and then can play again. So if you want to make the game slightly more challenging, what we can do is we can also define um, like a speed for the drops. So right now it's going by 10. So then if you want to define something like say int gem speed equals 10, like so. And okay, set that one here. Right, so if the score goes up a certain amount, so say for example, if um, the score is greater than 10, then item speed can be about, say, 20. So if you make it like you know, really, really fast, so it makes it difficult for people to play it for a long, long time. So take a look. So say if I grab these five, 10, say now it's speed up. So of course once it speeds up it makes it a lot more difficult for us to catch a lot of the presents and it makes the game a lot a little bit more challenging and interactive for the players to play okay so i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and i will see you on the next one